Hey guys, so it is time for my top 15 of 2018. I'm very excited to do this video and honestly making this list was so hard because in 2018 I read 55 books and I listened to 11 audiobooks. The great majority of the books I either gave four stars to or five stars to. I feel like this was a year I just really knew the books that I was going to enjoy reading. Now I know also too some booktubers I can go to and bookstagrammers who have similar bookish tastes and who I trust their opinion on and I can read the books that they recommend and they always turn out to be pretty good. So that is all to say that making this list was very difficult and I know that there are so many more books that I wanted to have on this favorites list because there are just so many amazing books that I read in the year of 2018 that I'm just really surprised by. So let's get into 15. The first 10 I'm going to mention aren't really any particular order but then I do have like a top five that I'll share at the end and I'm wondering if you know any of my top five of this year because I think I've talked about these books a lot in my top five so I don't think it's gonna be that much of a surprise I'm not gonna share too much about these books either just because I have already talked a lot about them and I will include links below for when I've mentioned them previously if I have a review for it or if they're gonna wrap up or whatever so you can check down in the description if you do want a little bit more information about the books that I'm talking about this is going to the beginning of the year but I definitely had to talk about the Raven Boyds and I'm talking about the series as a whole I binge read this whole series in the month of January to February last year 2018 it's weird that that was a year ago now and these books I really really loved I did not expect to like them as much as I did because the summary didn't sound so intriguing to me that it made me want to pick it up right away which is why it took me so long to finally read these books but I just heard so many people talking about these books and so many people gushing about them I just had to know what it was about and I'm so happy that I did end up reading it because I loved these books I loved the writing style I loved the characters I loved the magical whimsicalness of this whole series so 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 good these are a surprise for me but just because I didn't expect to like them as much as I did so I'm very happy I read them definitely making my favorites list. Next, I wanted to mention The Golem and the Genie by Helene Wecker. So this is a very interesting book from anything I had read before. And it was another book that took me by surprise just because I hadn't heard really anybody talking about this here on booktube or bookstagram. I've seen maybe one bookstagram post about this book before. So I really went into this kind of blind and it was gifted to me by Nathan's cousin Brad. And it is just an amazing read. It's a blend of historical fiction and mytho not mythology I'm trying to think of the word for it and it's not coming to me but there is like a magical type of element to this and it takes place in New York City and it's just it's really rich and it's really good and it's really hard to get synopsis of it it was just surprising to me that this gem just hasn't really been that talked about because it's really really good made my hair it's list for sure. I also wanted to mention The Grey Bastards by Jonathan French. I read this with Nathan in the summerish time, I think it was. I don't exactly remember when, but this is a high fantasy story that is gritty and wonderful and some fantastic characters, really good humor, and a lot of plot twists. Like this is a book that just kept me wondering what the heck was happening and just kept me getting shocked just throughout the whole book. I mean, jaw dropping moment after moment. So I really love this. It's a great first book in the series and I'm just so excited to read the rest of them. Like I really, really want to read the rest of th these books right now, but they're not out yet. So yeah, I really, really loved The Grey Bastard and I do have a review for it that I will leave linked down below. I didn't actually read this book, but I have this copy from the library now, but I'm just saying The Shades of Magic, the first two books I read this year, and I really loved both of them. These were also books that I had been putting off reading for a while because I was afraid they wouldn't live up to the hype, and I really like them. They're really incredible stories and they're dark and they're about three different Londons and there's this magic in it that gets twisted in one London. There's a good magic London. There's a London that doesn't really have any magic. I'm doing a bad job of explaining this. There's a guy who wears a lot of coats. There is buzz about the series because it is good and it's well worth it. So I'm really excited to finally finish the series in 2019. But the first two books definitely make my 2018 favorites list. And this is a little different but I wanted to include this because it really touched my heart in such like a sweet way. I'm putting Winnie the Pooh on this list because I had never really read any Winnie the Pooh before this year. I just, that wasn't my thing ever. And I just decided for the Booktubeathon to read this and I found this edition, which I really loved and genuinely love this story. It is so 
cute. There are so many times I just wanted to share this with someone and to just have someone next to me that I could just gush about it with because it was just so sweet. So I would highly recommend, if you have not read Winnie the Pooh, please give it a shot because it's just so sweet and heartwarming. It's really short. It's just a children's classic and I, I loved it. I really loved it way more than I even thought that I would. So I definitely had put this on my list because it was just so sweet. This next one is probably not going to come as a shock as well, but that's How to Find Love in a Bookshop. And I read this book for the Booktubeathon as well as like reading Winnie the Pooh for it. And oh my goodness, did not expect to love this book as much as I did. This is definitely more like a personal experience thing. There's nothing super remarkable about this story. It's just the way it made me feel. And I I really loved all the characters and their sweet little stories and it just filled my heart up with happiness and so I had to include this on this list I just thought it was so so stinking sweet and it really just has a special place in my heart and honestly I could use a reread of it right now next is a book I read recently and that is Illumine so I've been putting off reading this book for a couple years now for no particular reason but wow, this was fantastic. It's a science fiction story and the way that it's written and the way this story is compiled is so unique and so engaging and you just fly through this book. It looks long, I think it's 600 pages or so, but honestly I read it in two days because I could not put it down. I did not expect so many of the things that happened in this book to happen. Like I was so shocked and it's one of those books that you can't really give a synopsis for because you just need to go into it and just go for the ride because you are going to be spoiled if you know anything really about the plot. You just let it happen. I did not expect to feel things about certain things, characters in this book that I did. It just had a way of shocking me so completely, but it was really good. Scary almost in some ways and it kept you on the edge of your seat and like freaking out moments of just genuinely like, what is happening? Get out of there moments. So yeah, it was so, so good. I can't believe why it took me so long to read it. Another book I had to include in my favorites list was The City of Brass. This was a so different of a fantasy read for me. It just is beautiful. It's about these djinn and this whole society that they live in and the hierarchy of certain djinn and the tension that is in this city and these outsiders who kind of get flung into it and are just thrown into this political system and they have to figure it out and it is very very good it's hard to describe this book it's a very complex world and a complex political system but i'm very interested in reading more from this series i just think it has a lot of potential and i don't know when the next book is coming out fingers crossed it is in 2019 but this book just shocked me with how good it is for being a debut novel also and it's well worth all of the hype that it's gotten so far this is probably gonna come as no shock to anybody but i also had to include a man called ova on this list by frederick bachman so i I listened to this book on audio and it's just a fantastic book. I've talked about this plenty of times. You have a spoiler free review for it, which I'll leave down below. So I won't say too much more about this, but it is just a very real and authentic story that seems so realistic and you care for these characters way more than you intend to going in. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful story that honestly anybody could read. So definitely would recommend A Man Called Ova and it had to make my list because it just made me feel so many happy things when I finished it. And the final book before my top five is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. So I read this book in the summer and I thought it was a fantastic fantasy story. I love the high fantasy, this whole world and this political system where there are these ska who are these slaves to this nobility and just the unrest that starts to happen. And I loved, I loved it. It was so good and I'm really excited to finish with the rest of the series but this was a fantastic fantasy series and it just made me want to read more Brandon Sanderson in general. So now we are in my top five reads of 2018 and this was a really really hard list to narrow down. Coming in at the number five spot is The Trespasser by Tana French. I read this book back in January and it's Tana French's most recent release in her Dublin Murder Squad mystery series which I have loved all of these books. I've been reading them with my book club The Murder Squad and we've been loving all of these books but this one really was special it was so engaging and I, I love Tana French's writing I love how she writes detectives I love how she writes partnerships the trespasser was definitely incredible so I would highly encourage you to read it's a book four or book five either way there's a couple books you have to read before you get to this one but it is so 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 good it's coming in at fourth place is going to be the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society which is one that I read recently and I really loved this historical fiction I also really love the 
Netflix movie adaptation. I think they are both equally wonderful, but they are both very different from each other. So the book definitely stands out in a different way. A book that I can recommend to so many people, and I think so many people can enjoy this story. It's another heartwarming story, and oh, I just, it's very, very good. Like it's a book that you just want to just sit down in one day and just read the whole thing for. I just really liked it. I thought I was going to like it because I'd watched the Netflix show first, but I was surprised with how much I liked it in like a different way because it was pretty different from the Netflix movie. So I'm so happy that I read it. It was so good. It had to make my list of top five favorites. Third favorite book is probably not going to come as a shocker to anybody that it's up in this list is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Maas. This is the final book in the Throne of Glass series. And honestly, I think one of her strongest books in the series, it had everything I wanted and more. It just, it was a fantastic concluding novel. And unfortunately you do have to read the whole series before you can pick up this beautiful book but I do have a full spoiler full discussion video of this if you've read this series and you've read this book and you want to know my more in-depth thoughts about it you can check that out but I just I really really loved it I mean I will definitely be reading this again in the future I thought this was gonna be my favorite book of the year for a second but I had to really think about all the books I read and it changed but definitely in my top three I mean this this was great my second favorite book of the year I knew this was gonna be in my favorites of the year when I read it. I didn't know if it was going to be my favorite book of the year. It actually became the runner-up, which I'm a little surprised about. But in the summer, I read The Secret Keeper by Kate Morden. This is historical fiction that I have gushed about a lot because it just took me by surprise. And I think that's why some of these books made it into my favorites, because they just surprised me with how much I liked them, and I wasn't expecting that. So Kate Morden's writing, first of all, draws me in her stories and her characters and just the way that she writes makes me want to sit by a fire with a cup of tea and a cozy blanket and just spend all day reading them. And I think I read this whole book in a day. I just couldn't put it down. It was <laughs> that engaging. It bounces between different character perspectives. And then there are plot twists in here that I, I didn't think there were going to be plot twists. I thought we were just here enjoying a story and a mystery. It was the first Kate Morton book I'd read and definitely made me want to read everything by her because this is a fantastically crafted story and I did not expect half of the things that happened in this book to happen. Like there was even a plot twist. I think it's the last 50 pages that I was shocked, like shocked at. Like I thought we were done with the story. Like we're doing that whole closing up everything. And then she just drops this bomb and just, oh my gosh. So please read this book if you haven't yet. If you like historical fiction, if you like Kate Morden, please. It's my second favorite book of 2018, and that's a pretty big deal. And my favorite, favorite book of 2018, it was so hard to decide on this, but I had to give it to Lethal White by Robert Galbraith. And I think it's because I had so much anticipation in waiting on this novel. There was so much mystery in when this book was going to be coming out. This is the fourth book in Robert Galbraith's uh, Cormoran Strike mystery series, and it's JK Rowling. If you didn't know that, you probably did. But honestly, the best book in the series so far, and it was 600 and something pages, which some people are complaining about. And that's still one thing I do not understand. Like, I don't understand why you would complain about 600 pages of something amazing. And I think what made me love this book so much was, yes, the mystery was interesting. And honestly, there were shocks all throughout this book, because I thought the mystery was going to be one thing. And then halfway through the book, it completely changes. And you just wow like you don't you don't see it happening but it does also what i really really liked about this it wasn't solely focused on the mystery i mean obviously the mystery was like what the whole book was about but also this book really followed a lot with the characters of robin and strike and their lives and i really really liked that because i've grown to love these characters so much and the fact that they got so much representation of just themselves in this book really made this book special and really is what put it on my favorites list because I just I loved it and honestly I wanted this book to just keep going on forever like every time I was sitting down and reading this book I never wanted to stop I just wanted it to keep happening and just the story to keep going and was very very sad when I finished it like I honestly was Dad. Anyway, those are my favorite books of 2018. Kind of a lengthy list, I know, and honestly, I'm already thinking of other books that I wanted to include on this list, but I couldn't, so it's just been a really good year and that is not a bad problem to have. Please let me know if you've read any of these favorites and tell me what was your number one favorite book of 2018. I'd love to know. Thank you for watching and happy reading.